Good morning. Thanks, uh, everyone, for being here uh, at 8.30 on a rainy day. Uh, my name is Tony Savorelli. I work as a senior web architect at Pegasystems, a software company based in uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts. Uh, the focus of our web team at Pega is largely on our internal sites. Um, I've been with the company for about three years, and for the past two, my, fo my personal focus has been on, um, on Drupal uh, localization, which uh, has largely meant uh, supporting our localization specialists uh, and providing ways for them to, and here's a technical term, declunkify their jobs. Um, my presentation is a very distilled description, really, version of the work that I've been doing. Um, I will talk about translation a lot, but I think uh, the main takeaways from my talk can be, can be really uh, be applied more broadly uh, to any development that requires integrating with external services. And lucky for you all, there's going to be, and most of all, lucky for me, there's not going to be any live demos and no live coding, so that's great for me. Um, so, I have too many things to look at here. Here. So, two years ago, when I started uh, in my role as a localization developer, this is where we were. Uh, of all our sites, only our main marketing site, uh, uh, Pega.com, uh, was being translated into six languages. Uh, we have, the site has a very complex data structure. We have a very active marketing team. Um, we are working with two translator vendors, tr sorry, translation vendors uh, to translate the site. Um, one of them is Lingotype, which is very well known for its seamless Drupal integration. Uh, and the other one is Claro, which provides the actual humans to, who, who are going to translate our content. The reason why we have two is probably historical, first of all, but Eclero is the provider of translation services for the whole company, for product, you know, web, non-digital marketing, um, and all that. Uh, and so we need to, uh, let's say, comply with this requirement. Lingotech, on the other hand, really makes life easier when, um, when, it, when not only localization specialists uh, are uh, not only localization specialists need to perform translations, but also uh, developers need to be able to access the translation memory to, uh, to simplify their work. So because Lingotech provides a web-based um, uh, platform to, to handle uh, the translation process, that, and, and this platform integrates with Drupal uh, very well, that was uh, a decision made years ago, and I, think, I, I still think things work pretty well. Um, a little background on Drupal localization for those who haven't uh, dabbled in it. Um, if you have done, if you have done any translation in Drupal, uh, I must guess that you might have done so, uh, done that in a in a more manual way. So create a node, save the node, create the translation, save the translation, and so on. Uh, whether or not you have internal translators available at your company, agency, client, uh, this process, this manual process works well if you don't have a lot of content, uh, if you're not translating it into too many languages, and by too many languages I mean more than one, um, and perhaps more importantly, if this content doesn't change all that often. And having an active marketing team means that the content change, some of the content, the most prominent content will change I want to say daily sometimes. And so translations will need to be uh, uh, kept up to uh, speed with that. Uh, in uh, any other cases, you will, in a cases like ours, you will need to automate at least part of the process. And two years ago, as I mentioned further down, our process will, was only, I want to say, 20% automated to, to be. Uh, optimist, optimistic. Um, it, when I say time consuming, our, our, process, our manual process were, was very time consuming, which is a kind word for mind-numbingly painful. Um, the process was uh, the following. Actually, I can show you a little diagram to, uh, that's here. This is where the diagram is. Um, 
The process was as follows. Our Drupal content was sent to Lingotech through the Lingotech module, which works. Um, and then if you can see those uh, uh, other arrows, they're squiggly and sort of handwritten because that's where the manual part comes in. Each of the translatable segments would be manually, there was, there was one person, our main localization specialist at the time, who would copy and paste each of them, each of the segments, not these, these are just examples, um, into a spreadsheet, um, then upload the spreadsheet to a Claro, to their platform, where they would uh, provide estimates, they would actually do the translation work, and then complete the order to say, hey, it's done. And then our localization specialist would come back, download this, this spreadsheet or spreadsheets, because uh, one is never enough, um, copy and paste all the translated segments back into Lingotech, and then download all the translations into Drupal again. Um, this process was bad enough when we had only one site, only the marketing site. Um, to, to localize. As I mentioned briefly, I'm gonna have to go back and forth. We had a up, uh, huge upcoming project uh, on the horizon, um, which was our new training um, website, which luckily enough, I had, uh, uh, wh whose development I've, I'd actually led up until uh, the moment I started uh, being the localization developer, so I, I knew that project very well. Um, and it's, and I'll, I'll show you in a second why I call that huge. So while this is an example, two examples of our marketing pages, um, so our marketing pages are fairly simple, uh, fairly effective, but simple. Uh, they're mostly uh, comp comprised of um, uh, nested paragraphs. It's a very complex, complex architecture, but simple and the, on the front end. Uh, each of the paragraph types will match a front end component in our design system. And so ultimately, the complexity of these pages lies pretty much entirely within the page itself. So uh, translating a marketing page, if you have to translate only one at a time, is a fairly painless job. Uh, Lingotech, the Lingotech module will handle paragraphs even when they're infinitely nested um, in, a, in a fairly straightforward way. So no issues with that, except for the manual part of the job, which was still um, problematic. Um, however, this is what we, in, in PEG Academy, what we call a mission. A mission is our main uh, training, con mm, training container, really. Uh, each mission, a mission is a, is a node type, uh, which in turn um, references a few other content types, such as modules and challenges. And in turn, modules uh, uh, will reference what we call topics, which are another content type, which has nested paragraphs and so on. Um, so, as you can see, compared to the marketing pages, the uh, training pages, the training content, the complexity of the training content lies outside the bounds of a single content type. So translating an entire mission, especially one of the more complex ones, which in turn contains references to other missions in, in a sort of like uh, Russian doll situation, uh, is, uh, is uh, potentially a pretty, uh, big job because you need to take into account all the different entities that are being referenced uh, in all this content. Um, and again, doing so through Lingotech is, is pretty easy, uh, but I wanted ways to, to make it even easier and uh, almost like a single click uh, situation. So my main goals, my, some of my main goals were these. First of all, allow the data uh, our translatable data and translated data to flow between our two vendors' APIs. Flow, not be copy and pasted, uh, copied and pasted. Second, use Drupal as the main control center. I didn't want our localization specialists, particularly once they, there, there stopped being only one and there started being more, now we have about 
four or five, if I'm not wrong. Uh, I wanted them to, to have a consistent interface through which to do their job in Drupal. Sure, they still had to then visit the Lingotech uh, dashboard and the uh, Claro dashboard for, it, for, for to complete part of the work, but within Drupal, I didn't want them to have to jump around uh, too much. And third, especially for, for the sake of PEG Academy, I wanted to allow them to translate hundreds of related entities at once without having to wonder where, where they were. Um, and I had a few driving criteria. First off, avoid reinvent, reinventing the wheel. So Drupal already has uh, an integration with Lingotech through the Lingotech module. Uh, okay, we, I wanted to continue doing that. Um, as, I, as I'll show in a couple of slides, there is also the possibility to, for Drupal to integrate with uh, the Eclaro API, which fortunately exists. And so I wanted to take advantage of that too. I didn't want to have to create something that was just for us. Second, I wanted, as I sort of mentioned, main, uh, to maintain a consistent interface. Uh, so again, uh, because if you're a localization specialist, your job um, is to getting translation do translations done. Uh, that's a unified concept. Um, it doesn't need to depend on how many different APIs we are using on the back end. Third, I wanted to avoid patching modules because sure, originally we had only one site localized, but then we have, I, how many sites do we have total? Eight or so, yeah, potentially, I mean, we're not translating all of them, but potentially we might be. So patching modules, is one hell of a job if you want to scale up what you're doing um, for, for something this complex. And it, it is complex. Uh, fourth, keep everything generic. As much as possible, I was thinking of anything I was doing as something that I could contribute back to the community. So anything that was, on the other hand, PEGA specific, and there were a couple of spots that were, um, should just piggyback on the core um, technology that I was developing and, and, and should be confined to small internal modules. Uh, so here are my technical building blocks, starting with some contrib modules. One, of course, is the Lingotech, uh, uh, is the Lingotech module plus Lingotech overrides and the asterisk, asterisk not a cartoon character. Uh, asterisk here means that I'm cheating because this is actually a module that I developed and I contributed. So it's, I mean, uh, it's fairly uh, easy to, uh, to contribute. So I, you know, it's my own module. Um, the reason I created it was mainly to solve a couple of workflow issues that I, that I, that we were experiencing just by using uh, the Lingotech module. Um, and I will actually talk, I'm not gonna spend too much time here uh, on this because I will talk more about the inner workings uh, of what I did uh, during the talk that I'll share with uh, Hector Lopez from Straker Lingotech on Thursday morning, same time, not same place though. Um, the other contributor modules are TMGMT or translation management tool which is an API suite that allows translating content from different sources uh, and sending it to different uh, tr translation providers, including Claro, which was very lucky. Uh, however, TMGMT provides its own interface, uh, which doesn't, n doesn't naturally uh, interact with the Lingotech interface. So that was one of the issues that I wanted to solve. Then I have a few custom modules. And I call these custom, custom modules because I st even after like almost two years uh, since they were done, uh, I still haven't contributed them, but I, eventually I will want to, I will want to clean them up and, and uh, document them uh, as well. Uh, so like I said, it, Lingotech, despite some of the similarities between the Lingotech module and, and the architecture of the TMGMT module, uh, they don't talk to each other, uh, so I had to create something that bridged the gap between the two. So the TMGMT Lingotech module uh, tries to do that by uh, adding a few plugins uh, for the Lingotech interface to add 
new filters to the admin, uh, new columns, because it's a giant table, uh, and more importantly, uh, entity operations so that we could uh, perform actions that were not related strictly to Lingotech, but related to our other vendor. Um, and also, uh, it provides a source plugin for, uh, that allows TMGMT to use XLIF data. I'll get to XLIF in a sec. I know we have to define our uh, acronym. So uh, data grabbed from Lingotech as the translatable data to, um, to be added to any order on Eclaro. So what is XLIF? It's the XML localization interchange file format which is the common format uh, for data exchange and computer data translation software, or CAT. It has been around for, uh, for a couple of decades, and it's, it's uh, I mean, as often happens with XML, uh, different tools can read it and uh, write it. So Lingotech can uh, import and export data in this format. Eclaro, on the other hand, can import and export data in this format. Uh, however, there's one problem. Drupal natively can't. So what happens in this whole process is that when you send data from Drupal to Lingotech, that data is sent as a JSON data structure. And then when you send data, if, you, if say Lingotech was not in the picture, if you want to send data to um, a Claro or to any of the, well, not any, I don't want to go that far. Um, it, it, if you want to send data to Eclaro, Drupal is able to send XLIF data, but originally the, the data that Drupal gets from its own database is not XLIF at all, so the XLIF data gets created within Drupal. However, we have these two integrations, both of which can read and write XLIF, so my, uh, my goal was to grab XLIF data directly from Lingotech, which is super important, um, and, and, and send that to Eclaro and back. Uh, the reason it's super important is because Lingotech will save um, within, the, uh, within the XLIF data structure all sorts of unique identifiers for the main document, for each of the translatable segments and all that, and those UIDs will need to be maintained once we get the content back uh, from the you know, the translated content back from Eclaro into, and, and put it back into Lingotech. If those UIDs go, then our process is broken. So that needed to be maintained. Um, I'll go back a sec. Uh, TMGMT file overrides, so uh, uh, why overrides? Uh, one of the sub-modules for, for the TMGMT suite is um, called TMGMT file, which allows to exchange um, something like an XLIF file and, and to push it up to a transla uh, translation vendor. Um, NTMGMT Eclaro XLIF is another piece that allows me to um, modify very carefully uh, the data structure so that we, mostly so that we can save um, information on, the, on where the process is at any given point. Small stuff, important but very small. Uh, so, I'm going to show a couple of, uh, well, not a couple, just one. Uh, so, after all of this, I don't know if any of you is familiar with the, uh, with the original Lingotech interface here, but uh, the most important part, uh, oh, by the way, I'm using Jin here, and it's not really playing well with some of the uh, UI elements, but that's what you get for using experimental stuff. But um, so this screenshot reveals a few of the features that I've uh, that I've been working on for the past couple of years, uh, both as an, an enhancement to the Lingotech module itself. New columns you can see, especially um, uh, columns that reflect the moderation state. Uh, for for the current revision of a node and the latest revision of a node, and I could ha I could have like ten talks about content moderation and translation maybe next year, um, and um, um, and particularly when it comes to the integration with Claro, and again this was one of my goals not to have to uh, force people to go somewhere else. There are a few 
operations that are specific to Eclero. So through the Drupal, through the Lingotech admin interface within Drupal, uh, a localization specialist can just sit there, send content to Lingotech, uh, then once the content is ready to be sent to Eclero, they can send it to Eclero, then do their thing, you know. Once the order is ready, they can just bring it back always through this interface. So the create order and fetch translation uh, are the two complementary um, uh, operations that they will need to perform, uh, plus another couple that are mo mostly to, to just the clear clear jobs is, is mostly for development purposes. So, um, and, uh, and, and so everything, most of the work can be done directly through this interface. So what I want to say is, of course, this is, I guess, a joke that would kill in the PEG Academy uh, team, but mission accomplished. Uh, because now, of course, it, I, I've hugely simplified this uh, diagram, but now what we have is data being exchanged, as it were, in the past, uh, between Drupal and Lingotech, and data as Xlif uh, files being exchanged between Lingotech and Eclero. Drupal is merely used as a conduit, as a, as a control center, if you will, as I like to call it. Um, it's mostly seamless, as with anything. There's always a couple of snags here and there, but it, it largely works. We were able last year to publish a number of academy missions in uh, French, German, and Japanese, and uh, Italian, Spanish, and Portuguese are coming this year. So that's, that's I, I, I consider that a personal success. Um, and people seem to like it. They seem to, they thank me sometimes. So, uh, so that's, that's pretty much it. Like I said, it was a distilled version of my work, and I hope it, provided some insight in, into something as um, daunting as, as this kind of stuff can be. If I want, I should probably walk around. I was just wondering what some of the gotchas you ran into were. Ooh, I need to go back in time. Uh, so, uh, mainly it was, I think one of the main things was about manipulating the, the XML data structure, frankly, because it's never pleasant. Um, if you've done any of that, it's, it's just not. Uh, but for the rest, uh, occasionally one of the APIs will not work as I expect it to. Uh, on both sides, the support is great. Um, uh, maybe they're, we're, we're just good clients, and so <laughs> they respond to our emails very quickly. <laughs> yeah, um, which you know it's it's inevitable. And but uh, but yeah, and and so sometimes uh, maybe the modules don't like don't reflect the latest changes to the API. And so, but because I mean we're a Drupal con, so we know how those kinds of things work, and it's always easy to to go in again. Possibly without patching things, but yeah, mostly because it's an external uh, integration. There's always that point where you're we're faced with something you can't directly control, and that's the part that I was going to say scare, scares me. It doesn't scare me anymore. But initially, it was. Uh, it, I mean, this whole task was was something that had been talked about for years. Uh, Kelly here can confirm. And um, finally, we, we got the resources and the time to do it. So, but mostly that. Um, what is Lingotech providing that Eclero can't? Could you just do direct, a direct connection between Drupal and Eclero without Lingotech in the middle? Uh, potentially, yes. Uh, but on the Lingotech side, uh, we get. Um, uh, web-based platform that allows uh, even non-translator people, I guess, to um, to manipulate the translations, especially when it comes to uh, during the development process. For example, you might want to translate things with with a machi machine translation uh, engine um, that. And then uh, look at what the all the translatable segments are. Uh, 
uh, before bringing them back into Drupal, do all the reviews. So basically, we can go through the whole translation process, even as developers, as, as non translator, I don't know if translator person is a, <laughs> is a word, but um, that w otherwise we couldn't, we couldn't do because all the translation process that happens on a Claro is completely offline. And then we wouldn't get the tools that, uh, that it, it manages all the translations. It maintains uh, translation memory, which is precious if you want to, to, uh, to have any form of reasonably accurate translation of content that's already been translated once. And so um, I, I, I think it, it does add value to the process, even though it makes, like these two integrations make everything. The people who are doing the translating aren't doing that within Drupal at all. Drupal is just showing the status of everything. Uh, yes, exactly, exactly. So the translators aren't even within the company. When I say localization specialists, they are j just, quote unquote, uh, they do a huge job. Um, uh, there are people within the company that are, you know, handling all the content that needs to be uh, translated, the review, they review uh, translated content. Uh, so we have them in different areas of the world and with different specializations, um, but the tr actual translators are all external and, and, and they never touch Drupal. They know their tools and we know ours, so. Anyone else? I guess not. Well, thank you everyone.